went down to the river I fell on my knees I bathed in the muddy water Set my soul free And my blue All my blue Were washed away And my blue All my blue Were washed away What's up guys, it's Jail Folks from Road Angler TV. Well, it has been a grind out here in Middle Tennessee lately. The last few times I went fishing, I got skunked. It's been so hard to catch fish. The weather or something has really thrown them off, but today I got back out there again. I got on a different stretch of river I've never been on before. I put it right past Percy Priest Dam in Nashville on the Stones River, and I put a few miles down. I didn't think that the current would have been that strong, but when I got there, it was ripping, and I decided to send it anyways. So, I didn't catch any fish, unfortunately, but I thought it'd be cool to kind of do a little bit of a different video here and kind of talk about what I do in situations where there's a lot of current, and how I paddle, and my thought process about how, how to stay safe on the water. So, in this video, I'm just going to kind of do a recap of my whole run today, and then I'm going to talk about some of my other trips and show some footage of things that I did to kind of get past rapids and kind of handle the current and even where to throw to expect fish to be. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to have another little clip where I recently caught a new species that I didn't even know was here in Tennessee. I did a random cast into the Stones River and pulled out this fish. So stay tuned. Here I am at the boat ramp with my Seaghost 110, putting in the water, straightening out my kayak here so I can hop in. Right away I'm noticing that the current is very strong, but I decided to go anyways. I'm correcting myself here, I'm having a little trouble at first. This is when I really start to feel how strong the current is. So I decide to uh, stay close to the bank on the right, kind of stay out of that main river channel. It's less current on the right. You got a lot of trees and rocks and stuff on the right that kind of prevent it from flowing. Just paddling along the bank, trying to fish spots I see that look interesting. It may hold a small mouth but staying pretty close to the bank out of that main current. I'm going around my first tree that's down. Every time you come across a tree that's down like this, you gotta kinda get out into the main channel and go around it. You can see the paddling is a little bit harder, but I'm still making way. Here I come across a pretty big tree that's down and I notice the current is really strong in here. It's really ripping so I have to go out in the main channel again and go around it. As you can see the paddling gets harder and I'm hardly moving now. This is when I start using my whole body as I paddle not just my arms and I start gaining a little bit of momentum but you can really see how strong that current is. Just fast forwarded, still just barely gaining any momentum. Trying to stay straight too. Whenever you're in a, a current situation like this, you gotta stay straight because you can get sucked up under a tree or something. Now the current's starting to uh, turn me around and at this point I kind of just decided to head back because that current was just really strong in there. This is a, a closer area to the dam. Now I'm coming down river and I'm going around that big tree that I was barely able to get around before going up river. So now I'm going back into the main channel and just floating around it. But uh, really correcting myself here as you can see I'm back paddling just a little bit just floating with the uh, paddle turned around 
that kind of straightens you out when you're in a current like that. Fishing again. Here I'm starting to correct myself again. I'm getting turned around by the current. There are certain parts of the river I noticed that the current doesn't necessarily stay straight. There's trees and rocks in the water that can disrupt the current flow and start to spin you around in certain areas, especially if you're out of that main river channel. There I was just back paddling to avoid this tree that's down. And then I just start to go with the current and go backwards around it. And then I quickly start to correct myself. Get back in control. Here's another good tip to remember. Whenever you have your rod standing straight up on a river, make sure you don't have any hooks exposed, or this is what happens. Sounds like I'm on a fish, but actually I'm on a tree, and I almost caught that tree pounder. And as you notice, I have rod floats on all my rods. Just in case I did lose that rod, there's a chance I could float. So it's another good thing to have when you're on a river. This is some footage from a previous trip. Now this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to make a cast and get stuck on a rock like I am right here. I didn't judge the river right and luckily the water is very shallow here. So there really wasn't any threat but definitely had to re-correct myself and get back in control. Rapids like these are always a lot of fun in a sit on top kayak. Pay attention to how I'm using my paddle. I'll turn it around to kind of stop myself a little bit and correct myself. I'm doing some fishing in between the rapids here. Here I'm coming up on another rapid. It gets stuck a little bit, but use my paddle and forward thrust to get through it. Here's another stretch of swift water. I use my paddle to correct myself, kind of dragging it on the bottom, getting out of those trees. Another long run here, just maintaining a straight forward motion, correcting myself again. Now I'm starting to get turned and correct myself again. And then another good way of fishing is to throw into white water like this. You never know. Bass seem to like the oxygen that's being generated in the white water like this. So I was throwing a spinner bait here and sure enough, I hook on a smallmouth. Right there in the bubbles. This was a smaller smallmouth than what I caught before. I caught a 19 and a half inch smallmouth on top water right before that. But this was a nice treat too. Coming from Florida, I've never really caught a bunch of smallmouth, so this was a very special trip. All right, guys, just got another smallie. Probably like a 16 inch smallie. Heck yeah. Let him go. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you dug the video. I hope you learned something. That's kind of the way I handle myself on the water when I come across some pretty heavy current. Uh, it's important to stay safe. Tell a buddy where you're going. And uh, be sure to check out the float before you go. Make sure there's no crazy rapids. And make sure the current's not too strong. Today, the current was a little strong, but I decided to go anyways. But I didn't go far, so that was very important. Anyways, here's that clip I was talking about. This is a new species for me. I never even knew that these were in Tennessee. I didn't know what it was at first. I did a random cast into the Stones River with a jerkbait, and I caught this fish. So check it out. 
Also check out my angler kit that I got available. Um, we're giving away a free charter in February and all you got to do is sign up for uh, my email list. It's free. So if you sign up for the email list, you'll be entered to win. And uh, if you pur purchase products, they also gain you entries, even more entries to win. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. All right. Peace. Got a fish, guys. A little jerk bait. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Oh, look at this. Is this a walleye? Look at that. This is a new species. I think this is a walleye or a... Uh, that other species that uh, is like a, a sate sauger or whatever it's called. Look at that. Never caught one of these before. <laughs> On a little jerkbait. Jerkbait minnow. That's a nice surprise catch. New species. Cool. Let him go. Let's give you that call. Drive lights on the water and drink a beer Just give me that bread